Good afternoon. Welcome to All About Animals. I'm Sherry Gratitor. My guest today is Bruce Briganzer. Did I do it right? That's close I enough. I did. <laughs> of companion. Now, wait a minute. You're going to have to help me. Companion okay, now this animals. one you got to get right. Okay, companion, so you do it. Animal, Touch, and Therapies. Yes. And what exactly is that, Bruce? Well, what I do is massage and body work with companion animals. I work with mostly dogs, cats, um, work with rabbits, and a few other species. They all they all share the energetic, so they all can work the same way. Um, I, I do hands-on body work, and I make house calls, but more and more what I do is teach people to massage their own animals, because I can only work with one at a time. And everybody really should be able to massage their own animal. It's not hard to learn. Um, it's not complicated, involved techniques. Um, if our volunteer dog will come in over by me, we'll show that. Uh, more than likely not. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's too busy watching the squirrels um, in the yard. Too busy watching squirrels, and I can't blame her for that. And she's so, a little nervous, too. That, I can't blame her for that, either. I'm probably making her nervous, mm -hmm. uh, just being here. Um, anyway, it, it it's um, a great way to bond with your animal. And that, I think, is probably more why I'm teaching people to do it than for the physical effects or the emotional benefits, although there's plenty of those, too. Um, I just, I think it's a great way to bond. And it teaches you to pay attention to them in a different way. You actually give them what they want because once they know what you have to give them, they show you what they want. Uh, the first time I work with somebody, I show them what we're doing. I go through a pattern with them of how we're going to do a massage. After that, I just show up, offer them my hands, and they kind of show me what we're going to do because they know what we did, they know how it felt, and they know what they want to do this time. So. Okay. Um, you alluded to a bunch of things that, that, that we okay. need to go into here. Okay. One of them you said there are physical benefits? Oh, definitely. It, massage is, with animals is not quite the same as with humans, but the physical benefits are pretty much the same. We get increased circulation of blood and lymph, which does a couple of things. It helps feed the muscles because improved circulation from the heart carries more nutrient. Mm -hmm. It also helps clean the muscles. Maybe clean is not quite the right term, but clear the muscles might be a better way to put it. Uh, the lymph system is how the unused part of, of nutrient gets out of the body. Mm -hmm. And by in, improving the circulation of that along with the blood, we send the nutrient and we take the waste products out so their bodies just work better. Okay, so it makes it more efficient. Pretty much mm -hmm. the same thing as with humans for mm -hmm. that. Um, there's also improvements in things like flexibility because loose muscles tend to be more flexible than tight muscles. And one of the main things that massage does is loosen tight muscles. Um, also, pain relief is a big benefit that they get from it, which humans, I'm sure, also get. I don't work with humans, so I have to go secondhand on that one. But endorphins are natural pain relievers. That was our demonstrator. <laughs> <laughs> That was the whole demonstration, folks. Demonstrating how not to get a massage. <laughs> I could take her and flip her, you know. No, no, no. Well, if she decides to come, that'll be fine. She's being not, very busy watching squirrels. Yeah. It's squirrel watching season. It so. is. Um, but flexibility is one. There's fluid around all the joints, and moving the joints around while we work with the muscles moves that fluid around and helps that circulate. Um, the main thing is the pain reduction. The better they feel, the more they're going to do, and the more they do, the more they can do. So particularly with dogs that are aging, where they're starting maybe to stiffen a little bit, it takes them longer to get up in the morning, that kind of thing. A few minutes of massage, and it takes years off them. At least off the way they act. It doesn't take any years off the way they act. Right, but it makes them feel better. It makes them feel better. So. so there we're talking about physical. We also, you, you also alluded to psychological benefits. Yeah, exactly. Massage is part, built on the trust and bond. Uh, because of that, it's a great tool for working past abuse. Animals that have been abused 
have learned a response to it. It's, you touched me, it hurt, I don't like to be hurt, so I don't want you to touch me. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the basic equation that works out. Assuming that we can get past that initial wall and uh, let them agree to work, or agree to be touched, then they find out that it's nice to be touched, that it feels good. And once they let me touch them, generally they let somebody else touch them, mm -hmm. which is a terrific way to get adopted. It's a terrific way to get past abuse. Um, even a better way is to find another word. The word abuse is one they've heard before. Mm -hmm. And once they hear a word, they have a meaning for it, and it reinforces an idea. So if you have a dog that's been abused, use a different phrase. Tough early childhood, not such a good life till he came here, or something like that. It gets the message across to whoever you're talking to without telling the dog. Mm -hmm. We don't want to reinforce stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it's also good for dogs that are just nervous, agitated, kind of easily disturbed because it has a calming effect. Uh, one of the things we do is slow them down. Uh, not always easy with border collies. You kind of <laughs> speed, speed up to the border collie speed and then slow them down. Uh -huh. But for most dogs, it, we start out with they're curious. Oh, she's not. <laughs> um, we start them. out with they're curious come. and then come. as they learn what we're doing, come. They get more and more relaxed and more and more oh, directive Turkey. about here, the way you. we're going to go. Lie down. Let me see your belly. Very good girl. That's my okay. good girl. Shh. We just let you be a star that way. You're a good girl. Yes, All you right. are. You're a very good girl. It's talking about uh, slowing down a border collie. You try slowing down a porty. Yeah. yeah. They don't slow it's down much either. Kind of the same thing. They, they really only have one gear, and it's like a race car. They idle at 75 and go from there. Um, so it takes, it's a little different with them, but everybody tends to slow down eventually. Part of it is how you work with them. If you go fast, it's exciting, which can be good. They like to be excited. If you go slow, that's calming. And they buy into the mood. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, that's one of the biggest things that people that I train to work with other people's dogs have problems with is going slow enough. So I tell them put on some, some new age massage music works because that tends to have that slowing and calming effect or some classical music um, just to get your rhythm slowed down. Um, that's, there's actually benefits in giving a massage. And what are those? That your blood pressure goes down as you relax and work with the animal. I'm not sure it works with humans, and again, secondhand on that. <laughs> uh, but it does work with animals. That's your blood pressure goes down, your stress level goes down. You do kind of have to be in the right frame of mind to start, which is relaxed and paying attention. Because as you go along, they're going to show you areas that are tight, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Tightness just means the muscle's been working. Uh, sometimes tightness is something I look for in an animal that's coming back from a surgery or coming off an injury, I want to see a muscle get tight because it tells me they've been using it. Uh, but tightness is one thing they'll show you and you just, all you do for that, and since she's not going to want to cooperate, I'll use me as a demo dog. First thing we're going to do is passive touch. You just let your hand rest on the animal with no pressure. Now I'm curious to know what she would do if you tried that on her. She, well, let's see. Is it all right if I touch you? It's okay. She's non-committal on that. In which case, we'll go ahead and try. Now, she'll either step into it, step away from it, or just settle under it. She's thinking about it. No, I think I'm going to leave. I think I'm going to leave. I think I'm going to leave. Come here. Now, we could probably talk her back into it, but... She's not in the mood, and it would take a while. Mm -hmm. So we'll just let her be the way she wants to be. Look at that. She's sitting with her back to me, which she yeah. never does. Yeah. No, Mom, you're not going to make me do something I don't want to do. because you made her do something she didn't want to do. Absolutely. She's telling it, me with her body language. It wasn't a bad thing. It didn't come across bad. She thought about it and almost came back. Mm -hmm. 
but he made her do something she didn't want to do, so she's going to go leave over there. She's going and give me her backside. Yep. You said something to me, and we've only got about three and a half minutes left. I mean, okay. this goes awful fast, Bruce. When I talked to you on the phone, you said, I want you to do two things for me. I want you to t tell the dog that I won't do anything she doesn't want me to do. Right. And I want you to tell the dog that I will not hurt her. Right. And obviously, which I did, by the way. Right. And, and, she, and she understood it. Obviously, <laughs> and I told and her that you were coming, to do. and she knew that you were coming. Right. Um, but obviously, your belief is that the dog understands that. I believe that. Right. And, and I tell people to tell them that whether they believe it or not, because the dog hears it. I just want them to know that they have a choice. That they're really the biggest difference between massage and petting are permission and intent. Petting, there's sort of an intent to make the dog happy, but really we do that more to make us feel good than anything else when we pet. But with massage, the intent is to help them help themselves feel as good as they can, and there's a difference in the feel in those two touches. Sure. Uh, she would probably be happy to let me pet her, but she doesn't want me putting any intent behind it. The other main change is permission. I can't work with her if she doesn't give me permission to do that. That's why she's sitting by the window instead of sitting in front of me. Uh -huh. um, you, can, you can pet whenever you want to. That's kind of up to you. If they don't like it, they get up and walk away. They mean they have some choice. But when they do massage, it's a very, it's not intrusive, but it's very personal. And very I mean, deliberate. They, yeah. they open up pretty deeply. Uh, and when we do work, I work very light, but we work down to the bone, the muscle relaxes, and we work right down through it. So they can wind up very, very relaxed. I call it noodle position. If they could sink into the floor, they would. Um, but it's up to them. They have to decide to go along with it, or it's not going to work for them. Okay, and I'm going to stop you right there, because I okay. think we've got about a minute and a half left on this. Okay. Something to that effect. And I want to tell the people... It's a good thing, and it's something that you can learn, and it's something that you can do for your own dog or cat that's a good thing for you and for the dog and cat. But they have to be able to reach you, Bruce. How do they reach you? Ah, Well, my website is a long name. It's all five words, Companion, Animal, Touch, and Therapies. I any capitals, or can they write it any way they doesn't want? doesn't matter if they're capitals or Okay. Not. Okay, dot com. It is a dot com. It is a dot com. Um, phone number might be easier. That's 847-782-1963. Now, do you teach this one-on-one -on -one or do you teach classes? I teach classes for people both that want to learn to massage their own animal and I train people to work with other people's animals as a group. I also will do individual instruction in somebody's home um, and a, a kind of an idea that I'm thinking of are hands-on pooch parties where you get four or five people with their dogs together and teach them all to do massage at the same that time would be at somebody's fun. house. I think that just sounds like a lot of fun. It does sound like a lot of fun. A Tupperware with dogs. Tupper, Tupperware party Tupper with wolf. dogs. Yeah. It's a Tupperware Tupper party. <laughs> Tupper pooch is good too. Or something. Something um, like that. We are out of time okay. and I'm going to thank you for being here and thank poo you. on you dog for absolutely refusing to cooperate. She, she was instructional in her own way. She was. She told she you was. what she wanted. <laughs> we are now going to take you to Save a Pet and show you some of the dogs and cats there that are just waiting for you to come and adopt them and love them and put hands on them. They're and waiting then learn for you to there. massage them. And yes. then learn to massage them because it will make the bond more complete.